Hey guys, welcome to Sam Co. Workshop. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about how you've kind of been misled on the whole four-wheel drive stuff. You're going to see some gnats and some bugs jumping in and out of here. Uh, I left the shed door open. Uh, it's been open all day and we're out here and like I said, there's you know a few bugs floating around in here in summertime. Um, but, so... We've been misled on what it is. Like when you see a truck says 4x4, you think it's four-wheel drive. It's not four-wheel drive. A lot of you guys know this, but many of you don't. So we're going to break it down through the aspects here of what really happens. So we have a car here, and I'm going to be showing you a ton of footage in this as well, too, so that it makes sense and you can see it firsthand. Some of it is footage I've shot from my own trucks um, and other footage that I've got from uh, somebody else who had a perfect demonstration of this. But so, well, to, to put it into perspective, though, a two-wheel drive truck, when it gets stuck, is really only one-wheel drive, okay? When one wheel on the back wheels, here's the rear of the vehicle, here's the front of the vehicle, you have both of them driving while you're going down the road, but as soon as one gets stuck, or one, as soon as a wheel breaks loose and starts to spin, all the power that comes into that gets redirected to that wheel that is spinning free, okay? This one becomes static and does nothing. It's part of what we call an open differential. Wing on, I just want to show. Okay, we're not going nowhere. We have to have that. In order for your vehicle to be able to make turns, okay, you have two sets of wheels, okay? When you make a turn, this wheel has to spin a lot farther than this one does, and so it has to be able to spin differently from each other to make that happen, or your car could not turn, okay? So differentials have to be what we call an open differential. So you don't have a choice. It's all in gearing in here. I'm showing you some pictures, but it's in the gearbox here. Um, but it's an open differential system. They have to be able to spin at different speeds separately so they can't be locked together all the time, and you, or, or you can't turn. So... But what happens is as soon as a wheel gets stuck, for example, give you a sim simple example. Let's say that it's snowy outside and you're on a paved road. You pull over to the side to send a text message or whatever. Two wheels are on the pavement. Two wheels are in the, uh, on, the, on the icy edge right there. When you go to take off, if that wheel on the ice breaks free, you won't move. You're sitting there. You're stuck. This wheel that's on the pavement, even though you're thinking, well, that one will pull me out. If the wheel that is in the ice starts spinning, all power gets redirected to that wheel that's spinning. This one will not move. It will sit there static. It's not going to go anywhere. So, and the same would be if you pulled over to this side. If this side was in the ice and this side was on the pavement, you go to take off. And then this wheel here is the wheel that starts spinning then this wheel dies and becomes static, okay? So it's part of an open differential system. It has to be that way. What does that lead us to then? What do we actually have? Well, what we have to understand is that two-wheel drive is really only one-wheel drive. The work, but so here we are, no um, traction control button here, or the, again, what is going to give us that auto-locking uh, uh, or auto limited slip differential. Limited slip differential, uh, like that basically means you almost get a rear locker. It's basically a soft rear locker is what that button is. Out here in two-wheel drive, just a quick flick of that button, just touch the button, you got a, basically a soft rear locker and traction control off is what you get. But let's go without it. Okay, so here we are. We're at the base of this hill. And what we're going to do here basically is we're going to just creep up here and see what we can do. Okay, we're going slow. Like I said, it's actually a lot steeper than it looks on camera. And it's loose sand. Okay, look. Okay, so I'm already struggling. Like I said, now I'm not trying to go fast, but we can see we're hopping. Okay, we're struggling here. Get a wheels and a mirror if you can. But, I mean, we're, we're struggling, but we're... I'm going to start. Let's go. See it flashing? You can hear it. Come on. We aren't going any farther. We're done. That's all we got. Stuck. Okay, we made it that far, but we could not get up. Now let's go back down and do the same exact thing, moving slow. Maybe try to avoid that hole we just dug. Oh, that's a big hole, actually. You'll see it here in a second. There's the holes we dug. But look at, actually, look at those holes, too. See how it's mainly this one over here that dug a hole. That one did not, okay? That's because we only have that one wheel spinning. This one's barely spinning. When
okay? Two wheel drive is one wheel drive. This one or this one is going to actually move the vehicle. Whichever one breaks free is the one that gets the power. And it's the way you don't think it should be. You would think, well, if this one starts slipping, this one would kick in and then take over and pro propel you forward. Not the case because of the open differential system. As soon as this one slips, all that power, this one becomes static, power gets diverted to that one, and they just sit there and spin. Okay, it's part of an open differential system. Again, it has to be that way by the laws of physics. Uh, there are ways around it, but it has to just be that way to go down the road. To be able to go down the pavement and turn, there's no other option for it to do uh, other than that. So we know that. So two-wheel drive is really only one-wheel drive. All right, for when you're off road and you get out there and you go and you hit a little bit of soft sand, all of a sudden truck starts going duh, 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 and shaking. It's because only one wheel is getting the power and it's starting to slip, but it's only that one. This one does nothing. You cannot have in a two wheel drive system without an LSD, which is a limited slip differential, like Chevy's G80 or an actual locker or something like that. You will not get both wheels to actually do anything for you. One wheel does everything and it, it can be either wheel and whichever one gets the loosest traction and breaks free the most gets all the power. Okay, it just again, it is what it is. So we know two wheel drive is really only one wheel drive. So four wheel drive, which every truck out there, four by four, you would think all four wheels work, right? No, we have the same situation in the front has to be open differentials up there. Mandatory. It has to or your car cannot work down the road. It doesn't do it. So. What we have is we have that same scenario, so it can be one wheel in the back is going to spin or be static and one can spin, okay, with the power. Same in the front. This one might be the drive wheel that has the power. This one might be the static wheel that doesn't, okay, and that can be reversed. But really all we have in a four-wheel drive system is two-wheel drive. We have this one and this one, or it could be if they were both again if you were on ice we'll use that example again okay if you were here and you pulled over onto the ice on this side of the road this back wheel would break free so you put it in four-wheel drive you're thinking okay well let me just put it in four-wheel drive so you click her into four-wheel drive and then you go but then this wheel here breaks free and the power is now diverted from the transfer case to that one power is diverted to that one because they break free these two are on dry pavement you think they would move you no, even in four-wheel drive, you're stuck because these two wheels, one in the front, one in the, in the back, is off on the ice. Those two wheels get the power because of the open differential system. These two on pavement will do nothing. You are stuck with a four-wheel drive vehicle and one front wheel and one back wheel on ice. These two on pavement, you're dead in the water. Your truck's not moving. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that kind of hard to believe when you think about that? But that is the reality of it, okay? This is how this is designed. And it ha again, it is not like they do this to dissuade you. It is because of the open differential system required to go down the highway, down the road. So a four-wheel drive is actually only two wheels. Whether it's this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and this one, or this one and this one, it can only be one wheel here. And it can only be one wheel here, okay? You only get one is all you're going to get. So it is not a four-wheel drive. It is a two-wheel drive for four-wheel drive. One front wheel, one rear wheel. Whichever one breaks free, that's where the power goes. You're stuck. It's a stupid system, okay? It is what it is. So what did they do to combat this? Okay, a couple of things. Now, there are such things as uh, limited slip differentials that come in. There are traction control aids. There are GOAT modes for Ford. There is crawl control for Toyota. There is uh, uh, Jeep's uh, uh, BDSL for brake system locking differential, uh, which where they apply algorithms to that. Subaru has it. Um, all these companies, a lot of them have some sort of something where 
if this wheel it starts to go, let's say you're in four wheel drive or even four wheel auto in a lot of these, and this one here is going forward, okay, and this one here is slipping, okay, they will apply the brakes on this one or apply the brakes here and to try to divert the power that was going to here like we talked about. They'll apply a brake to this one and start sending some of that power to there to get this one to get the traction. Auto just by touching that button real quick and easy. Now let's see what happens here as we go. Same kind of deal. We're going to take it slow and easy. I'm just going to same track, but I'm going to try and avoid those ruts. Okay, we're just going slow, putzing along. Okay, now we're still getting that same kind of shake in a little bit. That's fine, but we got the, uh, um, but now we got traction control off and we got both wheels when it needs it. Okay, so we're going to stop right here like we did last time, halfway down kind of thing. Let's go from here. Okay, it's still, you can hear it clicking, but we got double wheels for traction now. Okay, and we don't have the, we're not fighting with the uh, traction control. Oh, I think we just hit those holes. But look, let's see if we can muscle up through it. Nope, but look at that. But you can see how hard, how much harder they get to work. So this hill just kind of took us out putzing, but Look at the difference in these holes now. Let's go back here where we can see. Look at, now we have two fully working holes. That's why I just dogged right out. I mean, I was basically on it. Same thing happens in the front. This one starts spinning and it's normally the power would go there. What they're gonna do is apply the brake and then transfer that power here so that that one gets it. Okay, it's some sort of a computer controlled algorithm that senses wheel slippage and then it will divert um, power to the wheels that need it, they have the traction. Okay, it's done through the computer. That is computerized uh, brake lock differentials is what it is. And that's kind of the, um, and, and a lot of companies do that. It's a fantastic thing. It gives you a lot of option to be able to beat that open differential. Now, the true way to beat the open differential is with a locker, okay? A locker locks this so that the power can't just go here when this one slips, but the power is split 50, basically we'll call it 50-50 to this wheel and 50-50, 50 50% to this wheel. They are locked together. This gets locked and they are now permanently jammed together and they will do this. Now you don't use this on a road, but off-road is fine because when you make a turn, this inside wheel can just skip and chatter and slide. It's okay. It's on loose terrain. So if you get a rear locker, it's going to do that. So a four by four truck or four wheel drive that has a rear locker is actually a three by four wheel drive, okay? You have in the back, back here, hang on, I don't wanna make our mess here, keep it clean. Um, so in the back we have one wheel, this wheel that is now spinning 50-50 of the power, this one gets the other 50% of the power, and then you have whichever one can go and you can't get to slip, or you get to slip on the other one, and the power is diverted, you, everything we talked about is still the same in the front, but these two are now locked together, both of them are spinning. So you have one drive wheel, two drive wheels, three drive wheels, whether it's this one or that one. Okay, and that's the way it works. Okay, that's how a uh, four-wheel drive system with a rear locker is. It's actually a three by four setup. All right. Now, if you have a four-wheel drive truck with a front and a rear locker, it's the first time you will accomplish true four-wheel drive. Only used off-road, obviously. Um, because again, like we said, the vehicle has to turn. You can't have that. But a front locker does the same thing here. It is going to lock these. We're going to, again, call it kind of 50-50. 50-50 for simple terms. They are locked together. Power going there and power going here. So now... Regardless of what wheel spins, it doesn't matter because you have you got 50% of power here on the front and 50% of power here. They are both spinning the same all the time. 50 back here, 50 here, they are spinning the same time. Doesn't matter which wheel slips. Now, if you were on ice, they will pull you off. They, if you were in a trouble and you all three of these wheels were off the ground, 
this one would still pull you off or vice versa because you have the fronts locked together working as one whole axle the back locked together working as one whole axle instead of four independent axles that can do what they want to so the only way to truly achieve four by four in reality is to have a vehicle with four-wheel drive and a front and a rear locker A two-wheel drive is a one-wheel drive vehicle, as we said, and a four-wheel drive vehicle is a two-wheel drive vehicle, and if it's four-wheel drive with a locker, it's a three-wheel drive, and if it's a four-wheel drive with a front and rear locker, it's actually a true four-wheel drive. So it's just a lot to put into perspective. Now, I'm showing you footage in here along the way that you've been seeing, and it's uh uh, whatever it is, uh, something frog, four by frogs, four by four. I don't know, but I'm showing it to you, and I have their whole video linked down below because it's the only video I've seen that shows this so perfectly in a real world application. Um, and I'm going to show you bits, or I have been one or the other, but you're seeing bits and pieces of this in here um, where he is going to test it with four wheel drive, where it's only going to be one wheel that spins. He's going to test it with or, uh, four wheel drive, where you're going to have just one front, one rear wheel that's going to spin. And he's not going to make it up here. Then he's going to lock the rear end. So you now have three-wheel drive. He's not going to make it up there. He's going to lock the front end. And then he's going to make it up there. So it's going to show you this. And you're, or you've seen it already. I don't know. But point being that this is something that we all have to understand. Now it's nice that companies like Toyota and like Jeep um, and Ford, they all have some kind of computerized algorithm that will help with that. You know how the, the computer will apply brake to the spinning one and transfer energy. And it's a very helpful, helpful system. It's great that they do that. Like I said, a lot of companies do and it's a fantastic thing. Some companies do not, okay? Um, I don't think GM does. I don't think uh, most of the Chevy trucks do not. They may have modes on some, but I think they just rely on a G80, which is an auto rear locker. It's bomb proof. It works well and it does its job, but it's not very smooth. And it's, it's, uh, you have to have one wheel spin at least 100 RPMs before this one then will very hard kick in. Um, so it's a little more complicated of a system, but at least they give you that. A lot of vehicles, a lot of trucks out there don't even offer a rear locker, let alone there's only, I think there's only three of them out there that offer, uh, three three trucks that offer front lockers. You got the Gladiator, uh, you got the uh, the Chevy ZR2s, um, the Colorado versions, and the Canyon ATX4 Pro, I think, and then you have the... Uh, uh, the Ford Ranger Raptor, and then you got the the ZR2 Silverado, and you have the Ford Raptor Silverado or Ford Raptor F150. Those in the Tremor, mate. No, I don't think the Tremor even has it. I don't think the Tremor has a front locker. I think it's only the Raptors. I could be wrong on that, but I don't play a lot with the F150s too much anymore. But point being, very very few companies are offering you a true 4x4 truck. Okay. Uh, the only SUV that I know of, only two SUVs that I know of that offer that is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Not any R Wrangler, but only the Rubicon offers that. Um, and same in the Gladiator. Only the Rubicon does. Um, but And then uh, the Bronco, the new Ford Bronco full-size one, has the option of front and rear lockers. But other than those two vehicles, I don't think anybody else gives it to you. So it's pretty interesting how that works, and you got to kind of keep that into perspective. But hopefully this video lets you understand the reality that when you buy a four-wheel drive vehicle, it is not four-wheel drive. It is two-wheel drive. One in the front, one in the rear, whichever one breaks traction gets the power. So it's very easy, very easy to get a four-wheel drive truck stuck. It's not hard to do. Why? Because it's really only two-wheel drive and people don't understand it. And it's a reason that it is such a great advantage to have a rear locker because now you've just went from two-wheel drive to three-wheel drive. At least you know the back two are going to be working simultaneously in one of the front ones. But the key, the goal, if they could do it, 
as a front and a rear locker, you get true four-wheel drive capability. So hope this just kind of gives you a little demonstration of it and shows you how you've been misled. You know, everybody's like, oh, I got a four-wheel drive. I can get through anything. You don't got nothing. You got two-wheel drives. That's all you have, unless you get lockers. Okay, without the lockers, you have a two-wheel drive truck. And not that that's bad for many people because that when it's two-wheel drive on a regular truck, on a pickup truck, on a two-wheel drive, no four-wheel drive system, okay, you got one wheel back here that's working for you. When you, This is where all the lightweight stuff is on a truck, all the weights up front. When you kick in four-wheel drive on a truck and you add in one of these front wheels to get to work for you, because it's really only two-wheel drive, one back here, one up here. Well, this one up here that's going to do all the work has all the weight on it and is the most powerful wheel that you're going to have. It's going to do all the work. It's amazing what you can do with that. When I had that Ram 2500 diesel in two-wheel drive, that thing would get stuck on everything in the woods as soon as I hit any soft sand. Boom, that back end would shake and bounce, and that wheel back here would be breaking loose and spinning. This one's dead, doing nothing, and you got one-wheel drive, and it's whatever wheel it is, and it just can't push all that heavy front-end weight with no weight on the back end. But the second I engage four-wheel drive, I could go through everything with it because I had a whole diesel engine and all that weight on the front end, and that wheel working. It could pull you through everything you could think of. It was amazing. Okay, so the four-wheel drive system, even though it's two-wheel drive, since one of the wheels is in the front, it's a fantastic option. Why do people think, I mean, people don't realize it and probably don't think it, but you take a truck like the Honda Ridgeline, the thing is unstoppable even in two-wheel drive. Why? Because it's front-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. So your one main wheel is up here doing all the work for you, and it has all the weight on it. it makes it fantastic. So uh, just food for thought and understanding um, how don't, don't, you know, again, understand, just because it's got a 4x4 sticker on it doesn't mean it's four-wheel drive. It's really only two-wheel drive. You don't get four-wheel drive till you get into front and rear lockers. That's basically just how it works. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you soon.